To discuss in more detail, I'm joined by the former Conservative MP, now the broadcaster and columnist for The Times, Matthew Paris, and the author and Guardian columnist, Owen Jones. Good to have you both with us. Um, I suppose I'm bound to start with Halifax today. Um, what did we make of the, the tango in Halifax? What is the tango what? in Halifax? I panicked as well. I was like, does he know what we're talking about? What tango you don't watch your telly, guys. You don't watch your telly at all. Day. What did we make of the vision we saw in Halifax today? I haven't seen anything in oh, Halifax. Oh, Theresa May was in Halifax. Oh, was she? Yes. yes. Matthew, for yes. goodness sake. Well, I mean, the she's... manifesto launch was in Halifax. <laughs> was you it? must have seen a bit of the manifesto. Oh, Tell us what you I think. I didn't realise it was in Halifax. It was in yes. Halifax. Yes. And I'm just and there wondering was a tango. what you make of the... What you make... <laughs> you've wrecked it. Uh, what do you make of the vision that she's unveiled today? It is uh, uh, an ism. She says she's not ideological. It is an ideology. This is Mayism. In a way, it's looking back to the Thatcher, there is no such thing as society comment, and Mrs May is saying there is such a thing as society. It is the good that government can do. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly modest set of proposals, but for a Conservative, it's a real, if slight, change in direction. I, 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 I'm, on the whole, pretty impressed by it. Do you think that the social care proposals today, which are seen in some quarters as being highly controversial, um, are they part of a modest set of proposals or are they in fact a signal that she's moved significantly um, in a leftward direction? Well, I don't know if you call it left, but they, they are basically, as I, I think you and Ian Duncan Smith were discussing, I would say they are basically a kind of death tax. Mm. And the people who are going to object to them are not old people facing dementia, they are the children of old people yeah. hoping to inherit grandma's house. Yeah. Uh, somebody's got to pay for all this. I, mm. I, I think it's a thoroughly sensible proposal. On that, Owen, just first of all, the broad sense of what was unveiled today. Well, I, I, for me, I, I really think the rhetoric is, is irrelevant. It's the substance that counts. And when, just in terms of broad brush, the Tories have made it very clear to older people, this is what they're saying to them, you will vote for us, whatever we do. We take you for granted and we will introduce whatever policies we see fit, however they impact on you. So when it comes to this dementia tax, and it is a dementia tax, because if you suffer from cancer, for example, the NHS is there to look after you. If you suffer for dementia, as my grand did for many, many years, it's a terrible illness, a heartbreaking illness in so many ways, then you can whittle away the value of your home, hundreds of thousands of pounds, down to the last 100,000. When it comes to the triple lock and the abolition of that triple lock, the pensions experts say that the, the ones who will suffer the most are some of the poorest pensioners in society. And when it comes just quickly onto the winter fuel allowance, means testing, what that does is introduce a complex system of administration. We already have that with pensions credit, which is means tested. And a few, I don't know what the latest figures are, a couple of years ago though, a third of those eligible for pension credit didn't claim it because it involves complex forms. So across it. the across the uh, oh bless you across <laughs> the spectrum, yeah. what we're seeing is I genuinely think you know, disturbing. The Tories think that the that older Britain, the people who built this country up, it doesn't matter anymore what they do That's, because, because really they will that, vote for that, that, is, that is complete nonsense. You talk about pensioners suffering. The, the reduction of the triple lock to a double lock doesn't cause any pensioner to receive a smaller pension. It simply means that their pensions will go up in, in line with earnings or with inflation, whichever is higher, but they won't automati uh, automatically be pegged up every year. And, and I think that's, that's entirely fair. And so as far as the, the heating and the winter fuel allowance is concerned, I, I get it. I don't deserve it. I don't need a winter fuel allowance. And it's entirely sensible to me that people who don't need something from the state, from the other taxpayers, shouldn't be able to claim no, but it. But what we know from means testing, and this is the absolute critical point, is the best way of ensuring those who need it most is to have a universal system for two critical reasons. One, the complexity involved often in claiming those benefits. Oh, and second, thanks. and second, the fact that when you, if you get rid of universalism, the principle that we all pay in and we all get something back, it undermines public support. That old phrase, Poor services for the poor become poor services because if you remove middle class support from those services, then you, you, you withdraw public consent. Now, again, th there is a problem in terms of younger people who've suffered the, the, the biggest brunt of the last few years, but that is not solved 
by re reducing the provisions okay. of fine, fine, fine. because those younger people one day will be pensioners fine as words. well. Okay. Fine, fine words, Owen, but what you're basically arguing for is somebody perhaps on £100,000, £200,000 a year being given money to help with their winter heating costs and that just defies common sense. No, but, uh, but, but again, the way you're going to get savings, and this is, where, I'm afraid, the disturbing truth of means testing is those eligible for those benefits, many of them won't claim them well, and okay. that's where some of the biggest savings will be made. You've made the point, you made the point. I would ask you both three weeks to polling day. We've now had, you know, lots mm. of manifestos. Um, it can't be argued, Matthew, that people don't have a choice. They certainly have a very clear choice now in policy terms. We had the Labour manifesto, which, you know, was uh, made some very powerful statements in terms of taxation and spending priorities. I'm, uh, you know, Owen's views on that are, are clear. We've, we've read them. What's your thought on the choice that voters face now? Well, the choice is really between Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister and Theresa May as Prime Minister, and, and that's why the election is going to yield the result that we are all expecting. Simple as that. Well, on the visions itself, obviously Labour have said that instead of, you know, because we're talking about wealthier pensioners, their argument is get the top 5% of earners to pay a little bit more money. We can invest that in social care, education, housing, the nation's creaking infrastructure. And similarly, ask big business to pay a bit more to have the same corporation tax we had just a few years ago, still lower than the United States, okay. to modernise the country. The Tories, on the other hand, well, we've seen, again, it will be more of the same, squeezing wages, Thank taxing you. all the people. Thank you both very much. Yeah,